In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we built a propane-based flamethrower that mounts to your arm and uses electricity as an igniter. A few months ago, Grant told me about a video from a YouTuber named Jarius of All where he made this whole big cool contraption that used propane and this whole tornado device he built to make a gun that shot like a tornado of spinning fire. It was a really, really cool build and Grant had the idea to try and build something similar but smaller that all fit on one arm. So if you like this type of build, go check out his channel. He's got some really cool stuff and Jerry Saval, I promise I wasn't trying to steal your designs. We just happened to have a lot of the same and similar ideas. So there's some overlap, but your superhero double flamethrower build not the same, very cool. However, I'm now just gonna show how I came about building this one and finishing it up to make it into a really cool, fully functional flamethrower arm. This is gonna be three parts. Today, we're gonna look at the build of the mechanics, how I came about with the design that I have. Then in the next video, we'll look at fine tuning and placing the parts in the right spot. And then finally, we'll look at making and decorating the housing for the unit. And of course, if you haven't seen it already, go check out our video where we test this thing out. But for today, we'll take a look at how to start putting things together. Let's get started. Here's what we're going for. Propane will flow down through a series of valves and tubes through a solenoid and out a nozzle where it will be ignited by the strong electric shock being emitted from a taser. We are trying to use propane as the fuel, but what we want to do is get the propane out of this in a way that we can burn it. And not just like a little lighter style flame, we want like a flame thrower. Maybe not the same liquid stream that we get with the backpack flamethrower that Grant built, but something that really shoots out gouts of flame at high speeds. So this hose, this is designed to work with these things. And generally what you do is you attach it and then you have like a, a blow torch or something like that that goes on the other end. It's good for a lot of different types of tools. Let's take a look at how this normally works. The nozzle for the propane tank has a little pin down inside that hole and you may not be able to see it super well, but to get the propane out, that pin has to be pressed. This nozzle that fits on threads over, has a rubber seal in it that matches down right onto the bottle, and so it doesn't leak anywhere, and then there's a knob to control the flow coming out of it. Currently, it's set to off. I can thread my propane tank on. Now, at this point, if I turn the nozzle, propane will actually fill the hose, but the nozzle has another pin on the other side as a safety mechanism, so you aren't just venting propane into the air. So, first step is I'm just gonna cut this end off of the hose, now that I've disabled the valve, I'm going to do something that's not very safe and I'm just going to show you that there is propane flowing out of here by blowing it right onto an open flame. You can see that propane lights on fire. We can see that propane is now flowing out this tube and we actually are going to want propane liquid, not propane gas. And the key to that is basically turning this upside down. But we've got so much tube that has some heat in it that it just keeps evaporating the propane, so it still comes out as gas. So what we need to do is modify the valve itself so that we have a much higher volume of propane dumping out. That way, even if it passes through some tube, we'll still get liquid spraying. So now we have a valve that just opens directly and it's just putting propane out immediately. And at this point, I think if I turn it upside down, we can actually see some of the liquid propane. And that is what we want more of. This is dumping out just a little bit of propane at a time, and we want a lot like a lot of propane. So we're gonna take the direct route and we are just going to drill a hole straight through from one side out the other. We've now got a hole that goes right through this valve, which would allow for just a massive amount of propane to be dumped out all at once. However, because of the way we've just modified this pin, it no longer will come in contact with the pin inside the propane container. So there is another bit of modification we need to do and that's to add a cross piece that goes from one side of this little pin to the other that's thin enough to still allow lots of propane through but is in the middle so it will still hit that pin inside the propane cylinder. We've got our pin and we used a hacksaw to just cut a little notch down into it. This is a little scrap of copper pipe. What we're gonna do is just cut a small piece off of this pipe that can fit down into that notch and we're then going to solder it in place. We've got our little snippet of copper and it fits nicely into the notch that we've cut in the brass. We have maybe a little more than we need, so we'll try and cut that down a bit so we have less extra. And this basic design, this using a piece of copper shim to plug up the drilled out valve, this is one of the things that I got from the Jarius of All channel. I'm now applying some flux. This is flux that is normally meant for soldering copper pipes together. And the two do not solder together quite as nicely as just copper and copper, but I have had success 
melding these together with some solder. So there's the flux applied onto there, the copper fit into place, and we've got our solder. We're gonna try and heat this up to the point that it is nice and hot and add the solder onto the sides, hopefully bonding that together without filling the inside channel too much. We got that little copper piece soldered on, now we want to clean it up using a file so it's flush with the rest of the pin. While we're in modifying things, we also want to take off this knob and solder the peg onto the rest of the hardware. The way that we've drilled things out can make it so a little bit of gas can escape out that direction. We want to plug that hole up. So what we have is a little valve that automatically starts dumping propane as soon as it's attached to a cylinder. Now we're not trying to light the propane right as it comes out of our propane cylinder, we want to direct it. And so to do that, we need to attach some kind of hose onto the end of this valve. Connecting into the back of this valve that we've created, we've got a 1 8 inch to barb piece of hardware. And this fits in pretty snug, but we do want to make sure that no gas is leaking out, so we gotta use some thread tape. Fortunately, these small pieces often have tapered threads, so that even with the thicker thread tape, it'll go on pretty well. We do want it on there really nice and tight. It's gotta stop propane gas from leaking. The advantage of the barbed end is we can now add hose onto it and control how far it goes. We've got all this hose from the extender that we cut the valve off of earlier that should fit onto this barb. There we go, nice and snug. Now for the other end, I've got a piece that's a barb and another barb on one side, and this I'm kinda just gonna be using as a valve. So that is a good thing. We've got propane that sprays out the nozzle. We just have a very hard time controlling it so far. What we need is something that lets us turn the gas on and off. This is a 12 volt solenoid and here we have eight one and a half volt batteries giving us a total of 12 volts. So we should be able to connect the wires on the battery pack to the solenoid and have it open. The battery pack has a switch, turn that to on. Can you hear that? That is something inside the solenoid popping open. When the solenoid is connected, a small electromagnet pulls a small plunger against a small spring. Lots of small things going on at once. And what it does is it moves that plunger away from a seal so that when it's connected, you can kind of even see it moving in there. We need to get the fuel from this nozzle into this nozzle. To do that, we're gonna use a series of more of these little brass fittings. First, a threaded adapter, then one that reduces down to a barb, so it's kinda gonna be mirror imaged. And we're gonna be using this little barb because it perfectly fits onto the hose that came with the nozzle in the first place. We've got all this extra hose, we know it's designed for carrying propane, so we've already threaded that in. Let's add some more threads, attach that to our solenoid, and then the exact same thing on the other side. Attach the hose on one barbed end, feed that down to the solenoid, following our arrow. This is the inside. And now, in theory, the solenoid is acting as a valve that will stop the propane from going out when we attach it to the tank. It's attached to the tank. I don't hear or smell any propane leaking out. Let's attach this to our battery pack and see if it suddenly lets out a burst of propane. Ooh, yes. Quite a bit, in fact, it seems. All right, one more thing. We're just gonna try turning this upside down and see what kind of spray we get. Woo! That is a lot of fuel dumping out at once. We have propane spraying out the nozzle. Now that's a little close to the solenoid. We're probably gonna wanna add more hose onto the front of that so we have some control beyond the solenoid itself. Same thing, when we open the valve, all of our propane will blast out that little spot right there. The basic mechanics for how we're gonna get propane out of our tank is working. Now what we need to do is light the propane. We need a way to reliably ignite the spray as it's coming out of the nozzle. This is a personal defense taser. What we're gonna try and do is take this taser apart carefully, and what we want to do is take the leads out of the taser and connect to the wires that are currently connected to those leads. We'll then use those wires to reroute somewhere else so we don't have to have the taser itself up inside the jet of propane, but we'll be able to direct that arc right where we want it. All right, there's some extensions to my leads, and the other thing that I want to extend is the switch. I want to be able to activate this, not at the taser itself, wherever that ends up in my arm, but in my hand. So now I need to connect to here and here. Everything else will just stay the same. All of the circuitry will work. Even the lights should end up still working. At this point, we've redirected the leads of the taser out front. I've got some exposed wire. They're pretty close together, so it should be easy to arc. 
And this right here should be the switch. Currently it's set to off, so this isn't gonna do anything. But once I set it to on, connecting these two wires should activate the taser. Let's give this a test. A little nervous. Hey, that's exactly what we wanna see. Beautiful. Now we have electricity that should be intense enough to ignite some propane, and I wanna test that. Let's give it a shot. Yeah! That is the result I'm hoping for, and uh, I'm calling that a successful proof of concept. We did not want to leave the flamethrower mounted to a chair using duct tape, obviously. So what we wanted to do was build a frame that would hold it all. Using some aluminum slats, some rivets, a couple of nylon washers, and a little bit of webbing, this is what we came up with. Now, I haven't done the entire how-to exact step-by-step -step because this was very much just sort of figured out on the fly with a lot of trial and error. But we can show you the basics of how it was done, and it's super simple. We've got one larger piece of the bar. This is our inch and a half wide bar. We've got a piece that I curved. I literally just bent this on the bench vise. At this end, I drilled a hole through this slat and this slat, and I just used, there's four nylon washers. Propane tank can strap to this side right here. A handle can be added right here with controls for both the electricity and the propane. And this little plate is just something I added on as a place to attach our stun gun. So that's just gonna go right there. Then you can see I've got some straps. They're very, very basic. They've got this one little knurled edge. You fit the strap through here and it grips on. It can't pull back against it unless you pop this back. The idea is that it fits on about like this, Straps are holding on, I can bend my arm, I don't even have to hold onto the handle. It stays attached, mobility is decent, not perfect, it does restrict my movement a little bit, but for the most part it holds on and I can bend my arm, I can move my arm, I can aim wherever I want. That's the goal. So things are coming along nicely, but we've still got a ways to go. Check back tomorrow to see how we finish up the insides and go check out the test video if you haven't already. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit the bomb to get in the club. If you missed our last video or you want to watch it again, click up here at the top. Click down there if you want to see what the internet thinks you should watch next. That's it for now. Have fun, be safe, see you tomorrow.